Hi, I'm Richard Boyd from IBMP, which is Integrative Body Mind Psychotherapy, and the Energetics Institute. And I'm here today to talk to you about our embodied state and how it affects our mental and emotional health, and how there's some key exercises you can do which can help you to create and sustain wellness within your body mind. For most of us, we live lives where very much we live in our heads. We don't realize it, but we tend to live in a very mental, rational place. And we tend to neglect or avoid our bodies in the way we go about our normal lives. Over the course of growing up and then being in an adult life, our body develops certain tensions, certain blocks, which are embodied states of posture and chronic holding of muscles that, and tensions within the body. Now this information, we now know through neuroscience, is feeding up through the old reptilian brain at the base of the skull and into the limbic brain, which is the middle brain, both of which are un unconscious brains and are informing us about the state of our being, which then informs our psychology or our mind about how we feel within our reality, within our own personal world, or the way we perceive ourselves and the world around us. Now, without doing any form of therapy or any form of counselling, you can change the basis of your being to go from an unconscious state to a conscious state of embodiment. But what's more, in that you can also create the basis for wellness by dealing with the way in which your body holds itself in every moment, in present time, so that you are creating the basis for wellness in your subjective view of the world. This is because not only does your past inform the present, but your body informs your mind through the brain and the nervous system. And in particular, what we're dealing with here is the autonomic nervous system, the ANS. In this place, you have two states, the sympathetic nervous system state, which is what we call fight or flight. And we have the parasympathetic state, which is the state of wellness and ease. And the brain works with the nervous system to help us be in either or of those states. You can't be in both, you're either in one or the other. And some key parts of the brain, including the hypothalamus, the pituitary gland, the adrenal glands, are producing chemicals and hormones which promote that state of embodiment in us, whether it be in fight or flight, which is sympathetic, or the relaxed state of parasympathetic. Now, you and I, every day, could be choosing consciously to be in the relaxed parasympathetic state as a way of being in our world. If you are living from fight or flight, then you are living in a reactive, emotional and defensive place where the world you perceive out there can look threatening, frightening and it can mean that it is a laborious task to live in your world. Alternatively, if you live in the relaxed parasympathetic state, you have a lot of resilience to stress. You have a very relaxed, objective left brain that shows up with great rational thinking, logic and discernment. And you have access to your emotional life, which is emotional intelligence. So if I had a choice, I would certainly choose to live in the parasympathetic state. And that's what I choose consciously every day of my life. So how do I do that? Well, beyond what I've been in my past, I can choose every day to do a series of exercises which will bring me from whatever state I'm in when I do the exercises to a state of the parasympathetic, relaxed, aha state of being within myself as part of setting up my day. Now, if anyone has trauma, this is critically important if you suffer from either hyperarousal, where you're edgy and fidgety, or hypoarousal, where you're collapsed and lack energy, and you are basically numbing out to the world. So I'm going to show you a series of key exercises 
And if you follow them in the sequence that I do them, you'll see as I explain them how our body holds chronic states of fear and tension, which keeps us in the sympathetic or fight or flight state of reality. And how by doing these exercises, we can come out of that state and inform our brain that our body is safe and relaxed in our environment and therefore we are safe and relaxed in our psychology and can live from that very much state of wellness, state of peace, state of ease. Now I can choose that consciously by doing these exercises every day. So what I'm about to show you is how to do these exercises and what is the significance of each exercise and how it informs through the body and the autonomic nervous system into your brain how you are relaxing and how you are safe in the world. Now if you suffer any form of trauma these are great exercises for also starting to help you to build a container of the window of tolerance that you can then deal with in your world so that you can tolerate more and more arousal of triggers, noises, sounds and the things that typically tip you into states of arousal or trauma within yourself. So let's get into the exercises and I think you get what I mean by the time that you see what the exercises mean and how to do them and you don't need to be an athlete to do these they're very much available to any member of the community who has a basic level of health. Okay so let's move into the exercises right now.